If you've ever had plumbing work done in your home in the last two decades, chances are your plumber didn't lug in a bunch of copper pipes and a blowtorch. Instead, they probably reached for something more flexible, colorful, and quite honestly, a lot less intimidating, PEX. It's one of those behind-the-scenes materials that quietly changed how modern plumbing is done. But what exactly is PEX? Why has it all but taken over new residential plumbing? And is it really as good as it seems, or are we just trading old problems for new ones? Let's break it all down right here on History of Simple Things. Let's start with the basics. PEX stands for cross-linked polyethylene, which sounds like something only a chemist would care about. But don't worry, you don't need a chemistry degree to understand it. Polyethylene is a type of plastic. Yep, the same basic family as your sandwich baggies and plastic bottles, but cross-linking gives it superpowers. In the case of PEX, the molecules are chemically bonded in a way that gives the material memory, strength, and flexibility. It's like taking something soft and stretchy and making it much tougher without losing the stretch. This results in tubing that can expand slightly without breaking, handle both hot and cold water, and resist corrosion and mineral buildup. And if you've ever seen it in person, it's pretty distinctive, usually red for hot water lines, blue for cold, and sometimes white if it's used for either. The color coding isn't just for aesthetics, it makes life easier for anyone who has to service the system later. Whether that's a plumber or a future homeowner trying to figure out which pipe leads where. PEX started becoming a household name in the late 1990s and early 2000s, but its roots actually go back to the 1960s in Europe. For a long time, copper reigned supreme in plumbing, strong, durable, and familiar. But copper also comes with a price tag, literally. It's expensive, it's heavy, and it requires a lot of labor. Every connection needs precise cutting, soldering, and fitting. That means blow torches, flux, and time. Lots of time. Then PEX came along and changed the game. It's cheaper, like significantly cheaper. Not only is the material itself less expensive than copper, but it's way easier to install. It can bend around corners without needing elbows or extra fittings. It can snake through walls with less effort. And it connects with simple crimp rings or push to connect fittings, no torch required. That reduces labor costs and installation time, which for builders and renovators is a dream come true. What really sealed the deal for PEX was its durability. Unlike metal pipes, PEX doesn't corrode. It isn't affected by acidic water or buildup from minerals like calcium and lime. Plus, it has a bit of give. So if water inside the pipe freezes and expands, PEX is more likely to bounce back rather than crack like copper or PVC. That makes it especially appealing in colder climates where freezing pipes are a constant threat. Now, copper and PEX each have their loyalists. Copper still has that reputation for longevity. There are homes built in the 1940s still running copper lines today. It's fire resistant, can handle high pressures, and is a known quantity in terms of performance. It also adds a bit of resale value because people associate copper with quality. But it's not without flaws. As we mentioned, it's expensive. And it's a metal, meaning it can corrode over time, especially in areas with acidic or hard water. PEX, on the other hand, is newer, lighter, and easier to work with. Its flexibility means fewer connections, which means fewer potential leaks. And because it's plastic, it doesn't suffer from electrolysis or rust. That said, it's not invincible. It's sensitive to UV light. So you can't use it for outdoor plumbing or leave it exposed to sunlight for long. It also doesn't do great with certain chemicals. Like if your water supply is treated with a lot of chlorine, 
it can slowly degrade over the years. But for indoor residential plumbing, PEX is the go-to for a reason. It's cost-effective, reliable, and incredibly adaptable. One of the most compelling reasons plumbers love PEX is how easy it is to install. Copper plumbing is a craft, measuring, cutting, fitting, soldering. It requires skill, patience, and sometimes a bit of artistry. PEX simplifies the process drastically. With the right tools, it becomes a plug and play system. Crimp it, clamp it, or push it into place and you're done. It's a bit like Lego for adults. Plumbing Edition. In fact, because it's so user-friendly, some homeowners are even taking on DIY projects with PEX, something that would be far more intimidating with copper or galvanized steel. That doesn't mean everyone should try to re-plumb their house over the weekend, but the barrier to entry is undeniably lower. Even more interesting is how PEX allows for home-run plumbing systems. Instead of a branching network of pipes, you can install a central manifold, basically a control center, and run individual lines to each fixture. That makes maintenance easier and more efficient, and it's a major selling point for builders working on modern homes. So what's next for PEX? Well, it's not going anywhere anytime soon. With ongoing improvements in material science and design, PEX is only getting better. Manufacturers are finding ways to make it even more resistant to chemicals, UV rays, and pressure. Some newer versions, like PEX Alpex, even have an inner layer of aluminum for added strength and shape retention. More and more builders are incorporating PEX not just for water lines, but also for radiant heating systems, snow melt driveways, and even fire suppression. Its versatility makes it an attractive option beyond just getting hot and cold water to your sink. So the next time you see that red or blue tubing under your sink or peeking out of a wall during a renovation, you'll know exactly what you're looking at and why it's there. PEX has earned its place in the toolbox of modern plumbing, not just by being cheaper, but by being smarter. It's the kind of innovation that makes life easier, even if we don't always notice it. And maybe that's the best kind of progress, the kind that just quietly works. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.